What's up everybody, Nate here from Out of the Basement bringing you a brand new action figure review. Today from Star Wars The Black Series, we are taking a look at the brand new Deluxe Saw Gerrera. This is of course based on the Rogue One appearance, the latest Deluxe figure to come out in The Black Series, and again another example of a figure that was originally slated to come out in February, but here we are right now. Justin actually found this for me at his local Target, and I know tons of people have found this figure already at Target, so if you're unaware, you might want to go check your Target. This guy's been popping up all over, so for everyone out there that saw my vlog and saw that I missed out on Saw, thankfully, Justin had my back, so I have one now. If you didn't, you should check out that vlog, though, because it was fun, and I got some other rare Black Series pickups, but here we are with the latest deluxe figure that unfortunately falls under the category of deluxe because it's big and also it's a brand new sculpt. We have been seeing this quite a bit lately and it is rather unfortunate because this figure is deluxe price and we really don't get much here. We get two accessories, but the figure is brand new. Although there are some things that I'm gonna have to nitpick about it because of the high price, just like Justin with Cobb, if we're going to be paying these high prices for deluxe figures, I think they just need to go all out and really paint every little detail on the figure here. So I'll point those out a little bit later, but first let's take a quick look at the package. This is the Galaxy packaging, which will soon no longer have this window here, but we get a nice look at Saw in the box. We do get the teal Rogue One color. It says Saw Gerrera right there. Nice mural image on the side. On the back of the figure, we have a bio if you want to pause it and read it now, and also a zoomed in image of the mural art. Saw is number 10 in the line. Here's the barcode on the bottom of the box. We also have a logo on the side and not much else going on with this. So let's not waste any more time. We'll take a quick look at the accessories and then the figure itself. And first up here, we do get his cane, which originally I was a little bit worried because it looked very similar to Chirrut's staff, but thankfully it is actually completely different and is a brand new sculpt. It does feature some nice movie accurate sculpt work throughout, and we do get little bits of silver paint here, which is nice and always appreciated. And you can see the various like wood sculpt work that's all along here that's not necessarily painted, but is sculpted in there and yeah I think this looks pretty good looks pretty accurate and we also get a new blaster pistol here I believe this is the first time we've seen this sculpt and it looks really nice the silver paint app details on it are really reflective and clean the sculpt work is really nice and detailed as well and we do also get a little bit of brown paint on the handle so so even though this figure is light on the accessories at least the two we get have some paint on them and Saw does feature weapon storage for the blaster. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the figure. All right, and here is Saw out of the packaging. And I gotta say, for the most part, this figure does look absolutely fantastic. The armor details are just absolutely off the chain. I really actually do like what they chose to do with the cape and the clear translucent tubing that's also on the figure is just a nice touch, some nice added details there. And you can see for the most part, Saw does have a lot of paint app work going on on the figure, but still, just like Cobb, they just missed a few pieces and it's just like, why? You go so far to paint so much of the figure, but then there's just a couple spots where you know that they should probably have some paint there. And with this figure being deluxe price, you wanna see something like that especially when it's this light on accessories. This figure has even less accessories than Cobb Vanth. But still though, as a figure itself, it looks really fantastic here on the rotating base. Let's not waste a whole lot more time though, and we'll just jump in to the nitty gritty and take a close look at all these details. And right off the bat, just take a look at this wonderful head sculpt. The likeness to Forrest Whitaker is on point. It does have a little bit of a shine to it, but we even get some sculpted scarring, which has a little bit of paint applied to it as well. And some really nice detailing with the beard and the hair showing the Rogue One era here of Saw. And I'm sure we'll probably see a gaming greats version of this figure in the future just with the bald head to reflect the earlier point in the timeline but 
yeah take a look at the details of the costume and the armor here very movie accurate all of the colors are on point this blue might be a little bit light but i kind of like the way that it pops in all honesty but we have bits of silver again the translucent clear tubing for everything here just really nice detailing on this arm the silver paint on all these cuffs really pops out but then in classic black series fashion on the belt you see there are plenty of missed paint app details all the way around they did some stuff like the buckle and this little gizmo here but you know these are unpainted and above the holster here unpainted details and i really think that for the deluxe price, everything should have paint detail on it. And here's a quick look at the back of the figure, which has some really nice sculpted detailing there for this black uh, undersuit. And of course, the soft plastic cape here. Not soft goods, but I really don't think they could have executed this cape as a soft goods piece. I think it would have turned out probably pretty ugly and disastrous. So in this instance i think yeah the sculpted soft plastic here was the way to go to capture all this detail and i do like the way that they sculpt it and how it hangs off of the figure too and then moving down the legs here do have some more paint app details but again there's some little gizmos and gadgets and pockets and things on the legs that are clearly missing paint but we do have a little bit around the knees and we do have the two separate feet here of course at this point saw has a robot foot and it is nicely detailed and the other foot in the sandal is nicely detailed as well although again it is missing some paint apps there on the buckles so i think this figure falls under the same category as Cobb Van, where if you're going to charge deluxe prices, we really need to see everything all out deluxe about these figures. However, the details that are here are really nice, and this is a really beautifully sculpted figure, and for the most part, the details are here. But yeah, I just can't shake the deluxe pricing, and then there's so many missed paint apps, even though I get it because this is a brand new figure and he's big. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on, and we will take Take a look at his articulation. All right, and since this is a new Black Series figure, you can expect modern Black Series articulation. So Saw does actually look up quite a bit, and he can look down a decent amount as well. His head is on a double neck peg, so there is some really nice articulation here, even though the armor kind of limits it just a little bit, but you could still get quite a bit out of this head. And the shoulders here do rise all the way up. The armor piece is sort of like a soft rubber overlay, so it doesn't really inhibit the articulation at all. And the arms do rotate all the way around, but you do have to get them out of the way of those shoulder pads. And we do even get butterfly joints here on saw. We also have a nice single jointed elbow that gives you just a little bit more than 90 degrees, and it also swivels. And we do have a trigger finger hand here that rotates around and has a vertical hinge. And on the other side, we have a gloved grip hand that rotates and has a horizontal hinge. And for the ab crunch, we do get a little bit forward, not too much. The rubber overlay doesn't get in the way, but as most of you know, Black Series figures typically don't have much of an ab crunch. And saw is the same here. So a little bit forward and a lot of bit back. We do have some nice side to side as well, and of course we can get rotation out of it. So again, a nice point of articulation, but a little limited going forward. And for the legs, Saw can kick out straight forward. We get pretty decent splits out of him. Just a little bit of kickback. We've got thigh swivel, a single jointed knee. That gives you more than 90 degrees and swivels. And for the robo foot, the articulation goes all the way down and goes all the way up. We do also have ankle pivot and a peg hole, and we do also have shin swivel, I guess, robot foot swivel here at this joint. And same here for the sandaled foot, it does go all the way down, does go up, ankle pivot, and we also have the shin swivel here. So like I was saying, even though Saw is definitely a character you're probably just going to have standing there holding his staff. The figure is well equipped with modern Black Series articulation. You definitely can get him into some pretty dynamic posing situations here. So that is a fun option to have if you want to have a little bit more action-oriented Saw Guerrera. But yeah, this figure is going to serve its purpose. 
standing on the shelf looking cool. If you wanted to do some dynamic posing, you have those options as well. It has a great likeness to Forrest Whitaker. And for the most part, the details are on point. So yeah, I'd say that despite those couple issues, Saw is shaping up to be a really nice figure here. So of course, now that we've taken a look at the details and the articulation, it is time to do some comparisons. And first up, we have Jin Urso. That's the brand new photoreal update. And Bodhi, the pilot. Then with some characters that also interact with Saw just in a different era, we have Ezra and Cal Kestis. And rounding out the Black series, we have a Death Trooper and the Jetta Patrol Stormtrooper. And moving on to the Bandai model kits, we have the Shadow Stormtrooper and the Scarif Trooper with the stickers applied to make it the rank that we don't have in the Black series, but it's escaping my mind at the moment, but you know what I'm talking about. And last, but certainly not least, it's the SH Figure Arts Tank Pilot and the Mafex First Order Stormtrooper. So in conclusion here, is Saw worth it? Is he a worthy deluxe figure? I'd say as a deluxe figure, Saw definitely doesn't meet the criteria, especially when you compare him to deluxes that we've seen in the past. He's unfortunately part of a new trend of Hasbro making figures deluxe simply because they are either a larger character or they require more paint or they're a brand new figure. So in that regard, I think, yeah, Saw is really not a great deluxe figure, so the high price here really stings. However, he is still nicely detailed, has some really fantastic articulation, and is currently the only 6-inch scale Saw Gerrera that you can put on your shelf. So you really have to think of it that way at the end of the day. How badly do you want a Saw Gerrera figure? So for me, he's an essential character to have on the shelf, but yeah... I'd say this one's really going to be up to you. If you don't need a saw, I think this is an easy pass. The really high price, definitely unfortunate, but if you're like me, but if you're like me and you need saw because he's an important character in the Star Wars universe, then yeah, you probably already picked this one up. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed my review. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new. We're always talking about Star Wars The Black Series here on the channel. If you'd like to support us directly, we do offer a channel membership for 99 cents a month. You get a custom Clone Trooper name badge that changes based on how long you're a member of the Basement Dweller Army, and some custom emojis that you can use on our videos and in our live streams, which are every single Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time. We also have merch. Both are linked in the bio. Thank you to our current channel members so much for your continued support. And thank you to everyone else out there for watching as well. I'm Nate from Out of the Basement, and I will see you next time.